Hi, I am Christy Paul, and I have a strong passion in my heart to see people come to Christ. Join me as we raise up an army of powerful prayer warriors with the same passion to see Jesus Christ glorified and to bring this nation of ours back to God. Hi viewers, you are most welcome to yet another episode of Bring the Nation Back to God. I am your host, Christy Paul. Well, like the intro says, we have a strong passion in our heart to see the nation come back to Christ. And we have been speaking to a lot of pastors um, and how they have impacted the nation, the people, they, their community um, with their churches and what they're doing there. But what about, I would like to say, the layman's work, you know, getting into the community and removing the blindfolds, the lies of the enemies, you know, well, today I have with me a phenomenal, phenomenal writer, <laughs> an author of 11 books, I would say. Yes, an educator, playwright, and she wears so many more hats. And we learn about what she does and how she has impacted the community in such a powerful way, you know, to bring them out of darkness. Let me introduce you to Roselle Thompson. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was a wonderful introduction. Oh. Thank you so much. Oh, lovely. I, I'm so interested in hearing and sharing with our viewers everything that we've been speaking about. Mm -hmm. I am excited mm -hmm. for them to know right. about that. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Yes, Thank it's my you. pleasure. Well, um, I hope the viewers will be blessed. Um, certainly, yeah, you talked about the many hats. Uh, maybe I should take them one by one. Yes, yes, please. <laughs> okay. Yes, please. <laughs> All yes, right. Please. Um, in terms of the being an educator, well, I've been um, an educator for over 20 years, um, teaching uh, right across the education spectrum. Mm. So we're talking at um, from nursery to um, primary, secondary and university levels. Um, at the moment, I focus mainly on the GCSE, sec primary, primary and secondary levels, um, especially those who are struggling, especially those who, I, I think COVID has made it worse for many of them, yeah. but there are those who people have written off, um, uh, teachers are giving up on them, the ones that they say are uneducable, mm. I don't think there's such a thing. And so what I do is use an empowerment approach um, to bring and sort of re reprogram, if you like, um, those young people. And firstly, to tell them that they are the best. Mm. Um, psychologically, when you tell a child he's the best, something happens. And it's the same as when you tell a child, you're no good, you know, what is it? You know, yeah. it has the same impact. One is positive and the other is negative. And so mine, my approach is a, is a positive one. And over the many years, many years, I've watched children, you know, have this 330, 360 degree turn where they've moved from nobody wants them. They've been written off to children. You know, when I say, OK, within six weeks time, you're going to take an exam and you're going to prove to yourself. You don't have to prove to anyone mm. that you can do it. And then they look at you and think, this is a different approach. What is she talking yeah. about? But it, you know, it happens. When a child comes to you in that state, in that low esteem condition, mm. you have to do something before you begin to educate. Mm. And that is to remove that barrier, you know, remove the negativity and begin to put something in there before you can start putting in the education. When you remove that barrier, the job is done. You know, you enthuse that child um, they become children who want to learn because you're doing something to them from within. Mm. It starts from within and it radiates out. And so um, I love this. I'm extremely passionate about it. I can um, see. I can really see. <laughs> it's something that it's a joy. It's a joy to watch children grow and develop and become, you know, marvelous little little leaders. Yeah. So yeah. how did that passion develop? Um, I was very fortunate. I had a grand. I was brought up with a grandmother who, whose motto for me was, I am somebody great. 
Mm. And so I instilled that in the children. That this is the motto we had in school. This is the motto yeah. um, that I, I help them to live by that life principle. Um, it, it, it has done a lot for me personally. And I've watched over the years it just working and blossoming in, 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 in children and young people. Yes. Of all stages. Yes. So uh, because of that, I'm assuming you have the keys to uh, reject disempowerment. Oh, yes. Oh, indeed. Um, yes. Yes. I, I believe empowerment is the key, especially today. Um, I mean, some of the scenes that we see around the world, you know, the various protests, the various <clears throat> things that have happened since the George uh, Floyd's event, um, where people feel on one in one in one aspect they feel that they've been disempowered mm -hmm. and so there's a sense that they're using that 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 protest that voice to reclaim something yeah. empowering yeah. and and then that is the way it's manifesting um i um use my empowerment uh texts uh there is one that is called empowerment for parents and so that textbook um, is designed to remind parents that they have um, an amazing job as parents, you know, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's really a blessing. It's such a, such a great gift to be a parent. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the spiritual empowerment aspect of it. So, you know, the job of the duty of uh, protecting, growing and helping children. But there is another dimension, which is the spiritual. Yeah. And so it's on an everyday basis. So you you invest in that child. You, you, you speak into that child's life mm -hmm. empowerment. So tell us how important it is to, you know, uh, empower a child spiritually, because we can do it, try to do it. But like you said, you explained something about we need to lift uh, was it the boundary I think you said yeah. and then fill that child um, how tell us the importance of in, um, empowering in a child spiritually um, the importance of that is that when you when you disempower someone you have broken their spirit mm. you know you have taken something away from them when you empower them you have lifted that spirit yeah. and it's that spirit man you know within mm -hmm. that begins to radiate in action it begins to radiate in results and that that smile that changes that body posture that change, yeah. everything changes yes. you know and so you know having seen that over the last 20 odd years or more than 20 anyways more than 25 years yeah. I know I, I can guarantee me you if you bring a child and watching that child's body language alone tells me a lot of what's happened over a period of time. Yeah. So, so how, I know some different children, uh, they differ differentiate. Um, some are easy to catch on and some are not like you were saying. And with those who are not easy to catch on, especially in what your field, the education field, um, it may be hard to actually accept the empowerment that you bring into them. Yeah. Um, what what ways have you um, used or methods have you used to right. yeah. get it down there? I understand. Yes, yes. Okay. So the child comes with the parent and um, possibly some other adults. And you can tell that the parents and the adults are doing all the talking. Mm. And so that child is left out as if it doesn't matter. They're doing all the talking yeah. about the child. One of the first things I would do is to ask them to be silent for a moment so that I can engage and begin to lift that child, show the importance yes. of his voice yes. and what he has to say or she has to say. Um, when you do that and you begin to talk, okay, they will, they will maybe balk a little bit to begin with because they're so used to being told to be quiet or they have nothing, nothing valued to say. Um, but in talking to them, in, you know, sort of saying empowering things, um, uh, suggesting to them the kinds of milestones they can achieve mm -hmm. if they begin to engage, that's the first step. Okay. Yeah, it's the first step. I remember in particular, there was one boy who came and he sat with his back <laughs> to us. Really? He sat with his back to yeah. us. And 
<coughs> he because he really wasn't engaging he's been so used to you know being put down mm. and um so he'd come at a point where he'd been kicked out of every single school and there was a sense that right this is your last stop mm. and so i do say to them when i asked him to turn around so i can see him and smile to him you know because everyone's so like this yeah. there's a sense that even just the body language is a way of opening and so once i got their eye engagement i thought okay right so we're doing something here and um we 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 i told him what i thought he could do mm -hmm. i i said this is your here's an opportunity to remake and remodel yourself here is also an opportunity to show what I believe you have in you, because mm. I'm I'm empowering him now. Yeah. I'm saying you've got something still, even at this late point, late as far as others are concerned. Yeah. And he turned around and he started engaging and we were talking and I said, right, okay, so now that we promised this is going to happen, let's shake on it. And that was a shock because it's like, which, which teacher <laughs> says let's shake on it, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so what I was yeah. saying is that this whole idea of teaching and engaging is not something that you make a child fearful of, you know, because it, it is an interactive, um, um, you know, uh, a process. It is one where you have to empower and believe and show belief. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, there is a lot going on. That communication is so, is so important. So when you see a lot of the children who are aggressive um, and they've, they've had enough because they've heard it too many times, it's it's kind of dampened their spirit to the point where violence comes out. Yes, that's the only because, way. They yeah, can... that's it. You think I'm no good, so I'm going, I'm just going to be no good anyway. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. And uh, I've seen it worked. I've seen it worked time and time again. Awesome. Yeah. A approach is important. Praying for them also awesome. is very important. Yeah. Another one of the books that you've written is uh, spiritual empowerment for parents. Yes. Um, you talked about um, children who the case that you had the parents with the child and the parents were speaking so much for the child that the child was you know silenced yeah i i know a lot of people who grew up with that with that low self-esteem yes. and they come they they become a parent themselves yes. and they instill that same thing into the child where yeah. you don't speak you don't have a right to speak that's it and they themselves grow up and create that same cycle where yes. of low self-esteem, no confidence. Mm -hmm. um, is that where your book uh, in parenting comes yes. in? Yes, it does. Unfortunately, some of us have grown up in cultures where there is a belief that children must be seen and not heard, yeah. you know, and that is, you know, that is, there, there are contexts for this kind of thinking, but really if you make it the general belief that is so broken, it causes brokenness it causes silence and the the children who who have been brought up under, under that, that that kind of principle they will not put their hand up in class um they will put their head down while everyone who's empowered they have their hands up yes. and you know they're responding they're alive it's like electric they're electrified yes. telling the child <clears throat> be quiet shut up S you know go go to your room um you're actually killing their voice mm. You, you're taking away, you know, that spark, that thing that makes them that person. And yes, it becomes a, a, a cyclical, you know, um, principle in their lives. It happens in their lives, so they do the same with the children. And so that's why I said about breaking that cycle, mm. you know, putting that empowerment there. So the book is really about um, helping parents to understand that the, the, yeah, the language, what they say is important. There is power in the words this is what the book says. You, there is power in the words, the language. The Bible actually says that. Mm -hmm. And um, you can use that same power, which is within all of us, mm -hmm. not to curse, but to bless, um, and, and also to develop that child, nurture it in the way that you want it. Yes. You, ha you and I have that power in our mouths. Yes. So you, you, know, you empower that child from the time. So the book takes you from empowerment exercises for from birth mm -hmm. following the child to nursery to school and, and so every facet of that child's life university and even to marriage mm -hmm. you know when you can relinquish that responsibility a bit yeah um but you know is that great I and mean, you've got to be conscious that is something that you have to work on at all times i'm afraid it's not just having the children and 
<clears throat> and thinking, well, that's it. You know, they just do as you're told. That's it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't work that way. I love that bit that you <laughs> mentioned. Because I know a lot of parents, you know, from my community, we, we give birth and we have the kids mm -hmm. and we don't do that much input. Yeah. We'll say, oh, go sit. We'll, we'll kind of control them mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. they're what we want them to be. But we don't have that much input in their life where we yeah. develop them as next yeah. leaders or next That's right. human beings That's right. to, you know yeah you're right planet. about next leaders yeah. because i'm you see i'm coming from the position where um so i've had all this many years of teaching different children from mm -hmm. different cultural backgrounds mm -hmm. you see so you could see the ones that are heavily empowered you know they are enthused they are they, there's that Im amazing belief even at the age of eight mm -hmm. They can tell you about, you know, their background, where they've come from, what they're going to be. Mm. So when, you know, uh, during the lockdown, I had a couple of boys, um, they were young and um, year fours. And I said, right, and, and what do you want to be? We were doing this, I can't remember what the vocab wo word was. Uh, uh, yeah, aspirations. Mm. And um, they just said, they put their heads down straight away. They said, I'm watching their body language. I don't know. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean you don't know? I know. I just said it like that. And then they looked at me and thinking, oh. And then I had to explain what the word aspiration mean. <clears throat> and then, so for the next four weeks, we had to look at, um, and I said at the end of the lockdown, you will know who you want to be mm -hmm. because we're going to do certain, you know, things in, in your lessons that will give you such an inspiration you know that will you know inspire you that you will want to be somebody so we did lots of things we went through some pioneers we looked at some you know uh, inspirational people we we talked in detail um you know the parents were quite amazed as well and at the end of it yeah the results were there to be seen awesome it was there i mean in fact in, in the, one of my program the first one children's voices it was showing just that mm. how in just that very short space of time from March to, to, to May, how they had blossomed into some little politicians, I would mm. say, you know, absolutely awesome. amazing, amazing. Rosal, I really love what you're doing. I cannot mention it enough because I have grown up in a background, you know, where my voice was muted and I don't know how to use it now. It's so much so that I'm trying to refine it and a lot of this, but I really love what you're doing. To me, you actually put in the devil to shame and you empowering people, yes. giving them that power to become, to realize their true self. Yes, yes. That is so awesome. I cannot ask for enough. Thank you. <laughs> I cannot ask for enough. So Thank you don't you. only do that for your community, but you also have a TV program. You have a new app. Yes. Tell me about some of the... Oh, your play. Oh, yes. 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 <laughs> Let's talk about the play. <clears throat> right, the play. Yes. <clears throat> Amazing. Um, so this play is a Caribbean play. It's called Gang Gang Sarah, a Caribbean sensation, mm. as it is. So Gang Gang Sarah is the name, and uh, she's a, a Trinidadian legend, um, someone who, it, the legend says, has, um, during the slavery time, um, moved to the Caribbean in order to, what well, she flew, in fact. So, you know, I'm not saying she moved, yeah. she flew to the Caribbean. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. we I understand the sentiments behind that. Yeah. To look after the slaves spiritually. Mm. Mm. And so that was her role. And um, I noticed that when I started doing the research, um, that here was an, an amazingly important icon, Caribbean icon. Not much has been said or written about her. In fact, I'd written a book with her story included in it and then it troubled me because i thought okay here was a female uh pioneer um and uh, a, a leader someone who um had this you know astronomical importance as far as the culture is concerned mm -hmm. because once they were there they developed and became caribbean people mm -hmm. so you know she is at the forefront mm -hmm. and there was nothing there so i thought to myself look um, we need to do something. We need to rewrite her history, mm. give her life, mm -hmm. you know, and, and sort of put flesh on the skeletal bits that are there and, you know, and sort of bring her back. And um, so once I'd done that in the story, it became absolutely obvious that more had to be done so that here comes the play. Mm. And I remember every time I wrote an act or a scene, you know, I would pray and I'd say, 
God, I don't know where this is coming from. <laughs> this inspiration, I felt so humbled writing it because here was, you know, um, something that was quite hidden being brought to life, being, you know, re resurfacing. Yes. And there's a lot of that that needs to be done. So while people are uh, sort of doing their own, you know, recapturing in other ways, demonstrable mm -hmm. uh, physically, I'm doing that in spiritually and in a written form and something that others would be able to access, you know, to see how it is that Caribbean people became, uh, uh, sorry, how African people being brought into the region in the 15th and 16th century uh, became um, Caribbean people. But she is an, an amazing um, leader. Her portrayal is, is just dynamic. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And you... First of its kind. Yeah. <laughs> you've also, you've also, you've done plays and you've also, um, you have the your show on right yes. here on Bayfront yes. TV. Can you yes. tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So um, the Roselle and Friends talk show, again, it's about community empowerment. I'm, I mean, I'm always about empowering. Children are my passion. They're my love. Um, but... I mean, there's a sense that the community, not just the children, yeah. need empowering. So yes. most of what we do is highlighting some of the unsung heroes, mm. uh, also documenting our history. And so there's a sense that we're saying we are part of the fabric of British history. And here you are. Mm. Here is the evidence, mm. you know, and sort of some wonderful personality, amazing people who've d contributed so much to... Um, British culture and British society that I'm saying well here they are you know be inspired whoever yes. you are yeah. by them and so there's that's empowerment in a different in a different way um, I'm looking at both male and female because there's a sense that a lot of our males have been disempowered yes. through various systems and structures and I know Most that definitely. if we can say they're not all they're not all drug users and takers and mm. pushers um, they're not all gangsters, but we have some amazing, you know, male, um, young as well as, as the older, who've done some great things that we ought to recognize, uh, record, yeah, make, make records of it, and, and show the world that it's there. So really, it's giving alternative perspectives and, um, and empowering all the communities, not just black community, mm -hmm. it's everyone. So it's a, it's a lesson in in a program hmm. lessons awesome. <laughs> awesome you do want to tune in what day is it on wednesdays uh 11 30 every wednesday um on the program awesome. yes awesome you know rosel i just love that you 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 said that your your passion is for the kids but for everyone as well but i love that you start so young that even when when people come across you i know because the story about i think the blue eye uh, no, it was the guy, I, I cannot remember the story, but you were telling me about someone you empowered and they saw you on oh, the yes, street. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So, so you starting so young, <laughs> even if we come across Roselle Thompson, we'd have that in our spirit that, oh, I met this lady and I can do it. Yes. And I remember I you telling so. me that story. Yes, little oh Robert. Gosh, yes. Um, he said he was telling his, his, uh, his missus, you know, that, it, it, look, this is my present. Miss, miss, I'm doing good still, you know. And I was awesome. so embarrassed, you know, he's a man with his children and, you know, awesome. it's it's great, yeah. And sometimes many of them are calling me miss on the street. I don't remember names. Uh, sometimes even the faces, and, I, and you know, I'm acknowledging them. Yeah. And I'm still empowering them. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. awesome. And you also have your app. Yes, yes. Phenomenal app. It's called Connect with Rizal. Okay. Yes. Um, first of all, I have to say that the, the making of this app has you know been made possible by some amazing people that's very generous and delightful chairman you know of tmh yeah, yeah. Stuart, Stuart, yeah. Stuart freeman um he you know he's he's a man of his word he's a man of action um and then his team um Pritesh Jani from mm -hmm. jump 360 yeah. amazing teamwork to create something in a very short time so dynamic uh, this is what i would like to say it is dynamic the app is easy, easy to in, in, integrate, um, interact with. Um, you've got our courses on there. Mm -hmm. You've got the programs on there, anything that you've missed. You've got um, our resources, the books on there. 
awesome. many many books are there and of course the, di the dynamism about it is that we can keep adding more and more so mm -hmm. you know connect with Roselle app I'm, I'm inviting you all to download this app go to yes. Google Play um, or Apple Store and make sure that you have that so that you can connect and there are wonderful courses uh, many even during the half term we have master classes for GCSE students those who are struggling with Macbeth, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. those who are struggling with Inspector Calls, A Christmas Carol, anything that's so that's literature, but on the language uh, side as well, you cannot fail. You need to connect, and then we will do the rest, and we will guarantee your success. I know yes. it's, a, it's a big deal, but I'm still saying it yes. because I know it's workable. It's worked for 20 years and more, so yeah awesome so is there any last words for our viewers our te i know there's some teachers looking on is there anything that you want to you know leave with them before we go parents yeah i would say the power is in your mouth in your in your tongue be always mindful of how you use that power empower rather than disempower um, love every single child and see when they walk through that door a possible leader because that's what mm. I do mm. oh he could be a leader everyone can be a leader you yes. can help them to do it yes it's up to you thank you so much that was an empowering <laughs> word <laughs> thank, you. thank you viewers you can be a leader too I'll see you on our next show bye bye uh, hi I am Christy Paul and I have a strong passion in my heart to see people come to Christ. Join me as we raise up an army of powerful prayer warriors with the same passion to see Jesus Christ glorified and to bring this nation of ours back to God.